Hey everyone and welcome to the 10th episode of our Salonim series and in this one we are going to close out our project. Now we need to also figure out how we should find the price and the rating for each one of the hotels and then we need to understand how we are going to convert all this information into being a Python object. And later on we will also see how we can display the data that we have in a nice table to the console. So if you want to see the complete picture of a finished bot project then make sure to watch this episode till the end. So be sure to hit the like button and let's get started. Now I want to do something important before I go ahead with this tutorial and that will be changing the month of the check-in date and the check-out date. And this is because it has been a week or two weeks since I recorded the last episode in this series. So I just want to make sure that the dates are going to match the today's date. So that's why I'm just going to jump the dates by one month only by changing those to 06 besides 05. All right, so now we are ready to continue to customize the data that we need. Now we said that we'd like to customize the data in a nice table where we will display the hotel's name, price, and also storing the hotel's score, meaning the rating, could be a great idea. So if you remember, we ended up by customizing inside the booking report file this pool titles method. And this one is actually going over each of the deal boxes and tries to pull some attribute that is going to be useful for us. So we could take as advantage that we iterate over each one of the deal boxes and we could actually try to pull the price and the score along the way. So that's why I'm going to remove the printing line from here and I'm just going to comment out what I'm doing in each iteration step. So I will comment here, pulling the hotel name. And then later on, I'm also going to change the pool titles to more generic function like pool deal box attributes, something in that kind. And now I'm going to go over and start basically pulling the prices. Now to save some time, then I'm just going to show here what was the approach of finding the price on each deal box and as well as how I found the score of each hotel. So that's why I'm going to straightforward say here hotel underscore price and that will be equal to deal underscore box dot find element by class name and then the value here is going to be so let's open up strings and then I'm going to say bui dash price dash display underscore underscore value and so if I have a class with this value then it means that this is going to give us the price so that's why I can allow myself to do that now I'm going to use the same approach of getting the inner HTML attribute and deleting the white spaces and if you remember we have done this in the hotel name as well so I'm going to copy that and paste this in and that line I mean those three lines will be responsible to pull the hotel price and then if we go down below and we also say here hotel score and that will be by deal box dot get attribute and there's a great reason why I use here get attribute and not a method with find element by something and that is because this element has already an HTML attribute that looks like data dash score and so what that means it means that if we were to pull only the value of this attribute in here then it means that we are going to receive back the hotel score in scale of 10 so an hotel score could be 8.5 9.1 9.5 and so on and so now that i have done this then again i'd like to clean the white spaces so just for safety i'm only going to launch here dot strip like we did previously with price and hotel's name all right so now that we have a name price and score for each one of the deal boxes then let's test first our program now i'm going to do something that might look weird to you but i will explain just in a minute why i'm doing this so in order to test this out then i'm going to go up here and i'm going to use a list that i want to name it something like collection and that is going to be equal to an empty list. And then as we keep iterating over name, price, and score, I am basically going to need to add those attributes to this collection. 
so we could have an organized and structured data. And I'm going to use nested list here, where the collection will be the list that will include multiple lists. And each list that it is going to have is going to include three elements. And one of them is going to be name, the other one price, and the third one is going to be score. So I'm going to use here something like collection dot append and then I'm going to add to that one more list and then I will say hotel name hotel price and the other one should be hotel score and now that I have done this then I really want to test out if I have all the data that I wanted to pull from the beginning so I'm going to use here return collection and I'm going to go back to our booking.py file and I'm going to search for the method where we report the results and I think this should be here. And then I'm going to launch here the method that we have just finished to design and that is going to be pull deal box attributes. Now, if you remember, we used return statement. So when we execute this line straightforward, then we are not going to see anything. So we're gonna need to wrap this up with the print built-in statement so that we will be able to see the data. All right, so now that we have done this, then let's open our terminal and test the results. So I'm going to bring our terminal to here and I'm going to say python run.py and let's see if everything is going to function correctly. Now let me move the web browser to the screen and let's see what will happen. All right, so the bot is running and now we should see in the console of our terminal the results. So I'm going to open that up and let's zoom out a bit so we can understand what is going on here. All right, so you can see that we are sort of having a weird output, but let me break down what is going on here. So you can see that the first and the last characters are actually square brackets because this is the collection of data that we have now. And you can see that this includes the list of first hotel and then the second hotel and then the third hotel and so on. Now I'm not sure why we see here an empty string and that is probably because this Webster square 30 day rentals does not have a score so that's why it is an empty list. And you can see that as I keep going, we are having a list inside one bigger list that each list represents a collection of data about hotel name, hotel price, and also hotel score. And that is a great start to visualize our data with the pretty table library that I talked about in the very beginning of this series. And again, this library is going to help us to visualize the data in a nice table divided into columns and rows. And now let's see what we need to do in order to be able to visualize our data nicer. All right, so let's go ahead and see how to visualize our data now. So I'm going to clean the screen and I'm going to install a library that is called pretty tables. So it is going to be pip install pretty table like that. Now, for those that are asking why I'm not using virtual environment here right now, because I'm installing a library on the system interpreter, you can go ahead and do that because it will help you to basically have organized environment for this specific project. I just don't feel like going through something in few seconds, at least if I don't have a full tutorial on that on my channel. So that's why I'm going to straightforward install those packages in the system interpreter and I'm going to rely on that on this project. But if you feel comfortable using virtual environments, then I really welcome you to do so because this is a nicer way to organize your projects in your machine. All right, so now I will use this line and you can see that I have this installed. So it means that we can work with this library. So now I'm going to go back to our PyCharm and see how we could work with that. All right, so now that we have the collection of data in here, then we are going to write here a few more lines to basically display this in a table. So I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to import the pretty table library, but I'm going to import only one class from this library. So it is going to be from pretty, pretty table import pretty table like the following. And then we need to instantiate this class. And so it is going to be here. So I'm going to say right here, something like that. So I will use here table 
is equal to pretty table and this one is going to receive few arguments and the first one is very important which is the field names now i said that in the table we are going to have columns so in our case we probably want to declare here three columns and the first one will be the name and then the price and then the score so i'm going to pass here straightforward a list that is going to look like the following so i'm going to use here hotel name and then i'm going to use hotel price and then i'm going to use hotel score like that and again those are going to be used as the columns so let me use actually a keyworded parameter in here so we can understand all right so now that i passed this argument then we need to go ahead and create some rows in our table so it is going to be as easy as using the add rows method and then we are allowed to pass a collection of data and guess what we are going to pass in the nested list that i created a few minutes ago so that's why in here I used a nested list so it will be easier for us to basically pass in directly this collection list object so it is going to make our lives very easy. So now the only thing that we need to do in this booking.py file is going to be table.add underscore rows and then we can basically pass in whatever this returns in here. So it is going to be just copying and pasting this right there and then I'm going to basically leave it as it is and actually we need to print the table itself so excuse me for deleting the print line before now we need to print the table itself to really see the real table with columns and rows all right so now that we are ready now let's go back to our terminal and actually clean the screen and run our bot so it is going to be python run.py again and let's see what will be the results so i'm going to display the results in here and we will see in the background just in a few seconds the table that we expect to see so now you can see that we have this nice organized table that is really responsible to display everything that you need about the deals that you read from the booking website and you can see that it is very very organized and you can see that it is with the sorting of lower to higher because we have applied this filtration throughout this series and you can see that it is just more easier to read the data in that way and you can also use this pretty table library for different projects as well i really like this library to visualize data when i need to do some task and i want to display the data that i receive back usually i work with this library because it really displays the data nicer and it is just more comfortable to look at all right so now that we have completed this then it could have been nicer to control each time how we want to execute our bot so we might want to see results for different locations in the future and for sure we also like to change our check-in date and check-out date depending on what is the exact time that we want to prepare for a location so that's why maintaining those kind of information in the code itself might not be a great idea so that's why what we can do exactly like i showed in the very beginning of this series how the project is developed from the beginning is to turn those hard-coded strings into being inputs and then we will have the ability to ask the user about those kind of pieces of information so we could have here something like input and then we could ask here where you want to go and then what will end up happening is that the string that i'm going to pass in here as the input is automatically going to be passed in inside this bot.select place to go method and so it will be useful because now we will not have to change the code every time that we want to look up for a different location to prepare our vacation so that's why i'm going to do this approach for check-in date and check-out date and as well as adults count and I'm going to leave the currency as it is because it will probably be nicer to see the prices in United States dollars you can change it to whatever currency you want but let's leave it just hard-coded in here and only change those all right so I'm going to ask here besides hard-coding in the check-in date something like 
this. So I'm going to ask what is the check in date. And now I will also copy this statement and paste this in here. And then I will ask what is the check out date. And I will also ask here something like how many people, something like that. And then we are ready to go. Okay, so now I will allow myself to run again Python run.py and let's see what will happen. So at first we see our program and you can see that nothing will happen only after we select our currency because our program expects for an input from us. So it is going to be now answering each step at a time. So it is going to be something like, so let's say that we want to go to um, Los Angeles now. So I'm going to put that. And you can see that now it asks for me what is the check-in date. So now if I open the browser, then you can see that it has already selected the Los Angeles. So that is perfect. It means that it really works and we should see the exact same result when we provide in check-in and check-out date. Now we should be careful in here because we want to give the correct format. So it will be year dash month and only the day of the month right after that. So I'm going to use that and then I will say check out date something like the following. So let's say we want to go for five days and then you see that it asks for how many people. And meanwhile, I can check if this worked and you can see that it filled in the correct information. And now I will provide in four people, for example, and you can see that we receive an error. And I believe that is because we did not convert the count of adults to an integer. Now by default, so this is a great mistake that we had in here and let's fix this quickly. So let's bring our program and explain what is going on here. So you can see that in select adults, if we use here control B, you can see that here we are operating some actions that are requiring from this count to being an integer. And you can see that exactly from this line where we use minus one. So it complains about how a string could not use subtracting in here. So that's why we should go ahead and automatically convert this to an integer. So I'm going to use an int built-in function here and allow myself to execute this program one more time. So let's clean the screen and again use python run.py and let's minimize this up and then provide in the information. So it's going to be Los Angeles and then it is going to be again this date and then that checkout date and then we can say 4. And you can see that now we don't receive any errors. So I believe in a few seconds we should see the results in a nice table. And you can see that exactly this is what is going on here. And we actually have an hotel with 10 scores. So that is great news about this Grand Park LA 30 day stays. And okay, so you can really see that the results are perfect and everything functions well. And the fact that we use input could really help us to execute this program every time that we want to test out the results for different locations and as well as for different dates. So we could select the next month or the next three weeks or even tomorrow. So we will have this dynamic option to just providing the information once we run the program and we don't really need to change the code every time. All right, so I think this will be it about designing this Selenium project. Now, of course, there is always room for improvement and also adding some features here and there, but I think that I have covered everything that I wanted to accomplish from the very beginning, and that is the fact that we display the results in a console in a nice way, depending on the information that has been provided in where we want to go and the check-in, check-out date and how many people. So if you enjoyed this series, then be sure to hit the like button and drop a comment so we can really spread this video to more people on YouTube. And I will see you in my future videos. So again, hit the thumbs up button and as well as subscribe to my channel and see you around.